And good day, everybody. Russ Barkley back again with another commentary on ADHD, of course. In this one, I want to focus on the effectiveness of social skills training for helping children and teens with ADHD with their social problems. The question we're going to ask is, does social skills training work to improve the social problems seen in ADHD children and youth? Up through the 1980s and 1990s, traditional social skills training did not appear to be beneficial to individuals with ADHD. But let's have a look at a more recent review, which was published in 2019, in a website and journal that publishes meta-analyses and reviews known as the Cochrane Reviews or Cochrane Database of systematic reviews to be specific. This review, as I said, appeared in 2019, conducted by Story Row and others. Uh, that's from the Scandinavian area. And they reviewed a variety of studies up through that time and conducted a meta-analysis of those particular studies. The result of their review echoes what was concluded in the 80s and 90s, and that is that social skills training for children and youth with ADHD was not effective for helping these children. So uh, we see a long history here of at least 30 years or more of studies that fail to find much benefit from social skills training. Now let's go on. There's a subsequent review, another meta-analysis. This one was focused on teens with ADHD, and it was published a year later in 2020 in the Journal of Attention Disorders. The overall conclusion of this review that looked at 11 different trials and included at least eight of them in the actual meta-analysis was that there was no benefit of social skills training on teacher ratings of social behavior. So they concluded that, again, there's not much evidence here to support working with children, or in this case, with teens, using traditional social skills interventions. Let's move on and take a look at another social skills review. And this one was published in also the Journal of Attention Disorders about a year later in 2021. This one reviews 10 studies in the meta-analysis, <clears throat> and it looked at at least 900 and some participants were included in the research. This particular review finds that there was now some minimal evidence of effectiveness for social skills training in young people with ADHD, but the findings were very small, what we call an effect size, the degree of improvement in social behavior as measured by the proportion of a standard deviation by which the measures improved or changed. And they concluded that they, while significant, were quite small in the studies that they had reviewed. Now, why all the negative results? We know that children with ADHD have profound problems with peer relationships. We know that they talk excessively, move around a lot, are highly distractible, the usual symptoms of ADHD. But beyond that, we also know that they show poor emotion regulation, which in earlier research was the most important aspect for predicting peer acceptance or rejection. How emotional, how volatile, how reactively aggressive, impatient, angry, hostile, and so on, were ADHD children. <clears throat> Many social skills programs do not target emotional self-regulation as a vehicle for improving social behavior. We also know that children with ADHD uh, have difficulties with reciprocity, with taking turns. They tend to be domineering, self-absorbed, uh, a bit selfish in their social behavior. When they do interact, it tends to be a one-way stream of vocal interaction. There's no give and take. 
There's no effort to inquire with your partner in the interaction about their interests, what they would like to do, their behavior. Uh, and so it tends to be a one-way street of interaction. And of course, children and teens kind of tire of that self-absorption or, or self-focus. Uh, another problem with the earlier interventions is that they tended not to include peers as part of the actual intervention. Instead, they might bring children together either individually uh, in small groups or in larger groups, and then there would be an adult that would review various social skills, sharing, turn-taking, cooperation, anger control. But they weren't using the children with each other as a training mechanism necessarily. Uh, and so that could have been the problem with earlier studies. It tended to be more from adult to child or children rather than working with the children together, although some of the earlier studies did do that. There's a subsequent meta-analysis that was published now in 2018 that actually did look just at those studies that included peers as part of the training program. It concluded, after looking at 17 studies, that while there was some evidence for improvement from before treatment to after treatment, and comparing treatment to no treatment, there was little, if any, evidence available that looked at whether or not social skills training was better than some other therapies, better than medication or equal to medication. In other words, there was no active treatment control group against which the social skills programs were being compared. Moreover, this review, like all the earlier reviews, said that there was a strong evidence of publication bias, meaning that negative studies were less likely to be published than studies showing positive effects. And that can influence a meta-analysis toward finding some effects of the intervention. Uh, and then finally, they also talked about the lack of blinding in the evaluation of the peer, of the social skills improvements. Blinding meaning, were the people who were doing the evaluation, parents, teachers, therapists, were they blind to which children got the real intervention and who didn't or who got what particular attention placebo intervention if one was being used in these studies? There weren't many of those, by the way. Uh, and so what it concludes is that there's a high likelihood of publication bias there's a high likelihood that the evaluations aren't blind, which would lead you to find results because parents know their kids are getting a social skills group, and so parents report that their kids were better. Uh, so there needs to be blinded evaluations. And by the way, in many of these studies, when teacher ratings were used and the teachers were blind to which kids got the intervention and which didn't, they tended not to report any improvements in that. So while including peers might be beneficial to some extent, it wasn't overwhelmingly beneficial, and there were many studies that just didn't find much of an effect at all. So why the problems then with these social skills interventions if ADHD children have so much difficulty with social relationships? We know that half of children with ADHD tended to be friendless by the end of second or third grade, and we know that that figure rises to 70 to 80% of ADHD children if they also have oppositional defiant disorder, that pattern of hostile, angry, temperamental, aggressive behavior. The answer to why this might be so comes from a paper published in 2018 by Paula Adowin uh, and others. And this looks at the nature of the social problems in ADHD. And it basically asks the question, is this a problem with lack of social skills and therefore acquiring the necessary skills? Or is it a problem with performing the social skills that you know? As all of you know from my earlier videos and other publications, I believe that ADHD is a performance disorder, not a knowledge disorder, that the executive function deficits seen in ADHD lead people to not use what they know and this paper supports that view. It found that ADHD children showed little evidence 
of skill deficits or of problems with acquiring skills from their environment. And instead, what it showed is that there were major problems with using the skills they knew in ongoing social interactions with others. Basically, it's a performance problem, as I've often said. And why then does that explain the lack of effectiveness of social skills training? Because social skills training focuses on giving you skills, not on performing the skills you know at the point of performance in your natural life where it would have been beneficial for you to do so. The vast majority of social skills training research was skill training research, not performance-based interventions. Along then comes Amori Mikami at the University of British Columbia, who decides to completely reinvent social skills training based on my theory of executive functioning and this idea that it's more of a performance problem. And Amori went on to develop a program called Parent Friendship Coaching, in which parents were the therapists, in which everyday social interactions became the vehicle, the mechanism through which the training occurred. And while there was some small emphasis on skill acquisition, teaching a skill, a lot more of the intervention focused on performing the skills in the natural setting where it was useful to do so, such as relationships with siblings, with peers, friends, others in the neighborhood. Parents focused on reinforcing the use of the skills in natural settings. And so Omori did demonstrate through several studies that this intervention was much more effective than the traditional social skills interventions would be. So focusing on performance seems to matter. By the way, if you're interested, her manual is now available as a clinical manual publication called Parent Friendship Coaching. You can find it at any major bookseller. It's a good manual for how to conduct these kinds of social intervention programs for ADHD. Uh, so by focusing on performance over skill acquisition, maybe, maybe now we might be able to have some impact on the social deficits in ADHD children and youth. But up until recently, the answer to the question of does social skills training work for children and youth with ADHD, the answer would be no. And if it does, it's minimal. And if it does, it's probably related more to publication bias, lack of blinding, poor controls, shoddy research, but not especially well done studies. However, by focusing more on executive functioning problems, on ADHD as a performance problem, and helping ADHD children perform what they know with their peers, maybe, just maybe, we might be able to have a positive effect on their social relationships. So there you have it. That's my take on social skills training for ADHD. I hope you found it beneficial. Uh, if so, and you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. As I always suggest, recommend the content of this channel to others if you found it useful. And thank you again for joining me for this commentary. I hope you'll stay tuned for other short videos on topics related to ADHD as well. And as always, if I cite studies in my video, you can find the actual references, the links to those studies in the description that goes along with the video. So thanks for joining me, everybody, and be well.